Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I'm bringing you guys my team builder for week 10 of the UBC. We are going up against Will, coach of the San Antonio Sparse. And he's got a team of Excadrill, Altaria, Cresselia, Crobat, Beware, Tabufini, Jolteon, Incineroar, Stunfisk, Dusclops, and Dun. Sorry, did I say? Yeah, Stunfisk, Dusclops, and Dunsparce. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but we got it. Um, Will's a real nice guy. Definitely recommend you guys check him out. Um, and he has some threats on his team that are going to be a little bit hard for me to deal with. Uh, Cresselia is just so ridiculous. I, I can't handle how annoying that thing is. Um, on the bright side, he can't bring like a rest talk set versus me because I do have Greninja that is immune to psychic moves. And uh, for that reason as well, it's going to be hard for him to bring sub. Uh, like He could bring sub, but then he could bring like sub call mind... Psyshock Moonblast, but then he wouldn't have recovery other than leftovers. So, I think he could bring, like, Calm Mind, but it's going to be Calm Mind 2 attacks. And we can sort of work with that. And, um, other than that, you know, he's got some good setup threats. He's got Excadrill with SD, he's got Altaria with uh, Dragon Dance and Cotton Guard and things like that. He's shown that he's liked all of those sets in the past. Uh, Tapu Fini is something that he hasn't brought a lot this season, but I'm still a little concerned about it. Um, I can think I can deal with it, but, you know, Tapu Fini is just, if, 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 uh, you know, if I'm trying to status his Altaria or something and he has Misty Terrain up, I'm gonna have a bad time. Like, a uh, Misty Terrain plus Cotton Guard Altaria would be really bad for me. Uh, Jolteon and Crobat are really fast and kind of scare me. Um, I think honestly, like, <laughs> I'm really underprepared for Incineroar. Uh, there's a there's a decent chance that he that he brings that versus me because I guess I have my Entei which could switch on it and, and my Polyrath, but that's pretty much it. Greninja technically resists both stabs, but Greninja is not really a defensive mon, as I'm sure you are aware. So Incineroar could be a threat. Like, Scarf especially is scary, so I've brought some answers for Scarf and Cineroar, but they're all offensive checks. They're not defensive at all. Uh, but let's just get into this team. Uh, I'm bringing a <laughs> a non-typical Bronzong. I'm bringing Shookaberry Heatproof. And the reason we're bringing Shookaberry Heatproof is because Excadrill breaks through the Levitate, and so there's no point in running Levitate. But I still wouldn't hate having this thing to switch in on Excadrill if we need it. And then, uh, we still want the protection from an Earthquake from an Altaria as well. And, uh, we're running Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Gyro Ball Toxic. Which is, uh, gonna be allowing me to take care of Altaria, potentially. Like, Gyro Ball plus Toxic should wear down Altaria. If he's Cotton Guard, I can go for the Toxic. If he's Dragon Dance, I can go for Gyro Ball. And, uh, we're pretty much just running full, uh, defense investment. Uh, we could run a little bit more Spadef if I was more worried about... Uh, special Altaria, but we might be okay. Uh, next we have a kind of specially defensive Legolas with Spirit Shackle, Toxic, Roost, and Haze. Uh, we have a Key Berry just to help us a little bit versus Excadrill. Excadrill is very scary versus my team. Uh, it's definitely very scary versus my team. And uh, we can switch in on EQ, get the boost from Key Berry, and then we're going to be in position to take Iron Heads a little bit better. Because like a Life Orb, Adamant, uh, Iron Head does like 65% or so, something like that. But yeah, this is mainly here like to potentially switch in on Drill, but I'd rather not sack this thing as if he has Cresselia or Dusclop still around, because this can easily beat both of those. We go for the Spirit Shackle and we can trap it in, and then we can go for a Toxic uh, versus both of them. And if they try and set up, we Haze. If they try and attack us, we Roost. Uh, if they have status as well, that's not that great, but we can eventually wear them down uh, f probably quicker than they can wear us down. At least that's what I'm hoping for. But we did put more Spadiff into this thing as well because uh, I really want to be able to check Jolteon relatively well. Like Maybe for that reason I should go Leftovers over Keyberry, and maybe I'll make that decision before the battle. But I still like Keyberry for taking on Drill a little better because Drill's just... Such a threat. <sighs> Excuse me, it's like 1 a.m. as I'm recording this. But yeah, that's the decision I had this week. 
And uh, it's, uh, you know, talking about those two Combine Mons, it can do the, pretty much the same thing versus Tapu Fini, which is going to be pretty nice. Uh, next up, we have a T-Wave Thunderous with a T-Wave Sludge Wave Focus Blast Thunderbolt. Enough sp speed to outspeed Jolly Drill. And uh, this is kind of like an oh shit button for things like Crobat, for things like Altaria. Uh, those are pretty much the only two things that I really need Thunder Wave for, but it might also be nice for for other things. Uh, Sludge Wave to hit the Altaria, Focus Blast for Excadrill, T-Bolt for most everything else on the team. Uh, it's obviously immune, you know, Jolteon's immune and uh, Stunfisk is immune, but... Uh, other than that, I think this is a good bring. And we're running leftovers just to give ourselves some longevity. I can get off more T-Wave, switch in more times to rocks. Because uh, I don't have any removal, as I tend not to do with this team. Um, next we have a fully physically offensive Greninja with Darkinium Z. Waterfall, Night Slash, Gunk Shot, and U-Turn. Uh, the only change I might make to this is I might make Waterfall into Hydro Pump. Because I can take these EVs, put it into here... Make it 60, uh, run like a minus spadef nature, and then uh, yeah, make this hydro pump. And the reason, no, not a hydro pump cannon, that'd be awful. No, I did it again. Hydro pump. Okay. The reason that would be better is because uh, I can do a little bit more damage to the beware with hydro pump. But uh, hydro pump's still gonna do a, a ton of damage to Excadrill. Uh, which is really the only thing that I need water coverage for. And I guess also the Incineroar. But uh, we do outspeed a Scarf Incineroar, by the way, and a Scarf Beware with this Greninja. So that's where that coverage is nice. Um, we're going physical because I don't want him going with, you know, setting up with Cresselia and getting to, you know, these really high number of Spadef boosts and then we can't hit it very hard with Dark Pulse. Night Slash, we can hit it uh, relatively hard, and you know, on the plus side, it does have a high crit ratio, so we'll see if that works out for us. Uh, but really, I wanted to combo it with a Darkinium Z, so we can get off a Black Hole Eclipse. If he's full Fizz def, then it should do at least 60% min, which is still embarrassing. Like, Cresselia is just so annoying, I don't even know what to do about it. But uh, if we need to try and hit it hard, like if I can whittle it down with uh, one of these other Pokemon, get it in range of the Darkinium Z, Assuming that he's not Colbert Berry, uh, then we can hit it up with that with that Black Hole Eclipse. But yeah, otherwise, this is just a good Pokemon versus his team. Gunk Shot can hit the Tapu Fini and uh, some other Pokemon on his team. U-Turn is there for momentum. I guess I could run Spikes. That wouldn't be the worst, but I still like U-Turn uh, as an option on this, on this Pokemon. Next, we have a Choice Scarf Mew. Volt Switch, Dark Pulse, Earth Power, Psychic. Uh, I kind of struggled with what to put here. This is sort of the last Mon that I picked. I originally had Mew as my check to Cresselia and Dusclops, but I realized that Dissidui would do the job better this week because it can trap. And so I was like, okay, well, what else am I kind of worried about this week? Uh, well, you know, if anything gets set up, like the Altaria, I want to be able to do some damage to it. Uh, the Golbat scares me. Uh, Scarf Drill scares me, so Mew beats all those things, pretty much. Uh, I guess less so the Altaria. I did have, uh, Sludge Wave here before, but I want a move to go here that can do some decent damage to the Beware. Maybe I'll do some Calcs and I'll put it back to Sludge Wave. But, uh, otherwise this is the set. And I don't think Altaria can Oko me at plus one, uh, just because Mew is so naturally bulky. Uh, maybe it can, and I'm just underestimating it. But yeah, that's going to be the Mew set, just kind of like the Revenge Killer. I could put something else here, like Tyrantrum was kind of tempting because it can do a little bit more damage to Cresselia with a Bandit Head Smash. Uh, but Tyrantrum doesn't do that great versus the team otherwise, so I don't know. And last but not least, I have my favorite set of the week, which is my Salak Berry Nidoking with Endure. And so if I can get set up with this thing... I should be able to outspeed everything on the team. That might be one reason where it'd be nice to go for spikes on the uh, Greninja because I can get a little bit more chip and I don't have Life Orb and uh, having that little bit of extra damage on everything would help. But yeah, uh, he only has two ground immunities being Cresselia and Crobat. And maybe I should go with like Thunderbolt or Ice Beam on Nidoking 
just uh, just to hit the the uh, crowbat a little bit harder. Shadow Ball might be nice for like the Dusclops, but I don't think Dusclops is going to end up being a huge threat because uh, I do have Greninja and I do have Decidueye that can hit it. Um, but yeah, if I get up to plus one, then I have a good shot of taking care of his team. And uh, I've been wanting to run Endure Salic Berry. I saw someone run. Oh, uh, I've been. I was inspired by the Endure Salic Berry that Shoddy ran in the NPL versus uh, Merc. And uh, I've been wanting to use that set on Nitto King ever since. So I'm excited to give this a try. And uh, yeah, should should do some work if his team is sufficiently whittled. Is especially the Cresselia. That's the main thing that I need to weaken. Uh, but yeah, that's the team. Uh, I'm still a little nervous, and I might do like one or two last minute tweaks, uh, but otherwise I'm pretty happy, and uh, we just need to execute well. I don't think I played super well versus Grimm last week. Uh, well, it's not that. It's just like uh, I didn't expect a Specs Rotom, and it was able to Oko my Rock Setter, and that really put me on the back foot. Uh, if I had gotten up Rocks versus his team, I would not have lost versus the... Yan Mega and other stuff. So, uh, just gonna try and move on beyond that match and try and execute well in this week. And if we can win this week and we can win the next two weeks, we might be in a position to make playoffs. Right now, I think we're in eighth or ninth place and only the top six advance out of our 16 players. So, it's very competitive. And for that reason, we really, really need to win this game. It's super important. And, uh, yeah. You know, I hope you guys do check it out. It's uh, going to be really intense because there's so much on the line. And uh, it should be going up tomorrow. And yeah, so thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the channel for more gaming and Pokemon content. And until the next time, I'll see you guys later.